Preserving personal power, your fuel for change. This is a big one. People say, I want to change, but you know, I want to do that, but I, my, my life is full. My schedule is full. I don't even have time to think now. I don't have enough time, energy. I'm exhausted when I go to bed. I'm exhausted when I wake up. I'm exhausted when I eat breakfast, and I'm exhausted when I eat dinner. And you want me to change? Where do I get the energy to do that? Isn't that true? Haven't you ever felt like that? I just don't have the energy to do this, Dr. Mills. You have to understand the concept of personal power. There's been a lot of people that have developed this concept out there. You can read books on it. You can go online and learn all about it. But we all have a certain life energy. You say, what is personal power? It's your life energy, right? We all have a certain amount of energy, right? You say, oh, I think some people have more energy than other people. Some people do have more energy than other people. I would agree. But understand this. Every human being is created with sufficient energy to fulfill their achievements in life. Every person has sufficient energy. So the example I use is this. There's a such thing as a Ford Mustang, and there's a such thing as a Ford Focus. You can get in either one of them and drive all over the country. Get anywhere you need to go. Does one have more energy than the other? One have a little more horsepower, right? But does that mean it's going to get you from here to there any quicker or better? Not necessarily, right? I mean, if you got that horsepower underneath your foot and you burn the tires every time you pull out, you might rub your tires off by the time you get to California. Or I'm just cruising along my Ford Focus. I know I can't burn tires. So I'm just cruising, you know, kind of like the tortoise and the hare type of example. My point to you is this, is that we all have sufficient personal power, right? Some people may have more than others, but everybody has a sufficient amount. So don't come to me and say, well, I just don't have enough energy. I was created with not enough. Not true. Right? You have enough. So personal power, it is genetic and it is finite. Right? So you're not going to, you can't create more life energy. It just is. Right? So then how do we do it? If we can't create more energy, how do we get it? This is how we do it. By not squandering the life energy we have. How do you do that? Through acts of not doing. Let's look at some examples. Low personal power equals a mediocre life and low accomplishment. High personal power equals a successful life, but unusually out of control, if it's out of control, it can be wasted, it can be squandered. It takes personal power to change. It takes energy to change, right? Would you agree with that? But anybody say, oh no, it doesn't take any energy to change. It takes energy to change, right? So we have to come up with this energy. So we have to do, the first thing we have to do is we have to determine activities that squander our personal power. So we have negative emotional activities, we have negative physical activities, right? So emotional activities would be word, anger, worry, self-doubt, jealousy, resentment, lack of confidence, fear, rejection. Do words like that make you feel energized or de-energized? Right? So let's get, you know, let's look at negative physical acts. Staying up too late, not exercising, gossiping, arguing, video games, procrastination, drinking, drugs, watching too much TV, reading the newspaper, watching the nightly news. Well, I really feel empowered after I watched the Nightly News last night. <laughs> People think I'm joking when I say I don't watch the news. Listen, I have no idea what they say on there. Nor do I care. I mean, you don't care about... No, I care about a lot of things. I just don't need that guy's interpretation of it and trying to be fed into my belief system, Right? He's not going to say anything that's going to make me wake up tomorrow and be a better dad. He's not going to say anything that makes me wake up tomorrow and get on a treadmill and run. He's not going to say anything that's going to teach me how to help the next person be healthier or, or, or find the solution to their health problem. Right? I just don't participate. It's an act of not doing. You say, well, I spend a half an hour doing that every night. Man, did I just come up with some serious time and energy for you. Huh? 
Right? Does that make sense? Eliminate as many of these as you can, and now you have saved some personal power to be used in a positive manner. So how does this work? Hold on one second. I have a couple examples here I wanted to run through with you before I move on. Let's say you wake up in the morning and you have an argument with your significant other before you leave for work. You'd have more energy or less energy at the end of that day? Less, right? You exhaust yourself before you left. Let's say, for whatever reason, you got to bed early. You got a great night's sleep. You woke up before the alarm even went off. So you hit that, you went downstairs, you got dressed, you had breakfast, you got on the road five minutes early. Not only did you get on the road five minutes early, but you hit every green light. Do you think at the end of the day, you're going to have more energy that day than the other day? What's the difference? Did we create energy? No. We didn't squander it. 